Meet the Corpo State Nationalist Police State Enforcers. Social media algorithms. I tell you, social media is a dream come true for the Corpo State Nationalists, for the Citadelians that were and the new Citadelians that have arisen, the nouveau, the nouveau Citadelians, if you were. And I, I describe a Citadelian basically as being someone who has little to no accountability by any market competition or state competition. So these are the people they could literally murder and rape a human being and most likely get away with it. These are the Citadelians. And believe you me, many of them, I, I mean, I, I don't have the papers, uh, but based upon my, my theory regarding human nature and the reality of power, I have very little doubt that most of these people at the highest levels, the kind of rushes that they get perceiving them to be God himself, and they're all just trying to be God, uh, that, that they have, have done horrible things Horrible things to human beings that they'll continue to get away with. Personally horrible things in the name of pursuing this becoming God rather than seeking to understand the God that is our king. So social media algorithms becoming the new police state centers, censors. And this is an editor's choice report that this comes from. Social media algorithms, democracy, Senate hearings. Senate panel explores whether social media algorithms are threat to democracy. Social media outcomes threaten democracy. Experts tell senators Facebook, Google, Twitter go up against researchers who say algorithms pose ex existential threats to individual thought. And this is from Roll Call. A Senate hearing on Tuesday pitted <coughs> three powerful social media companies against researchers who testified that the algorithms used by the platforms to generate revenue by keeping users engaged pose existential threats to individual thought <coughs> and democracy itself. The hearing before the G... Mm -hmm. let's, let's get more of this. Let's get more. Let's get more. Click on roll call. Let's get more. So the hearing before the Senate, the Judiciary Subcommittee on Privacy, Technology, and Law featured a bipartisan approach to the issue from the new chairman, Democratic Senator Chris Coons of Delaware, and ranking member GOP Senator Ben Sass of Nebraska. Algorithms can be useful, the senators agreed, but they also amplify harmful content and may need to be regulated. May need, I tell you what, please do this. Please start regulating because as soon as you start regulating this, then we can start to sue these companies because now they're, I mean, at this point, I think you should be able to sue these companies because they are de facto governments. This is a government. The Corpo State Nationalist government does exist, and it's Facebook, Google, Apple, and when they want things done, when they want somebody eliminated, when they want to use market murder on, on one of the people that resist them, they come together as a team. It's just, this is the, the banks, this is the social media, this is Amazon, this is the NFL, they all come together as one team, because they are in fact a government, uh, but if they start to regulate the algorithms, now we could literally sue because then it's much easier to make the connection that, nope, you're literally imposing government power on free speech. So you are going to have, have algorithms that are going to be designed to chill speech, to chill dissenting speech, to define whatever falls outside of the parameters of the critical race theory Bibles as hate speech, as violence or terrorism or insurrectionism, whatever, whatever phrases that you want to use. And this, this committee hearing isn't really about serving the people. It's about how can the government... So there, we, we are largely being ruled by the corporate state nationalist coalition. It's not, I don't think it's a formal coalition, no. I don't think there's like secret meetings. I think it's just, it's a de facto type of coalition. But there is still some power that comes from the traditional nation state parameters. And some of those families are interested in preserving at least some of the nation state power as opposed to pure corporate state power. And so what you're seeing here is more a fight between the, the smaller group of people that still derive the, the, the most of their wealth from direct nation state power versus the larger group of people that now derive their power 
fundamentally through corpo state nationalist power that has no allegiance to no nation state but yet relies on nation states to protect their assets from from getting maybe the justice that it deserves in light of the fact that they've stopped serving their customers instead they're using their considerable market power advantage to turn human beings into horrible hateful fa hateful people uh there's still a clash there there's still a little friction there and this hearing really is about the government power getting some of its traditional power restored back to it and and i hope they do it because if they do then the lawsuits are going to be harder for the courts to to reject and, and make no mistake about it i I don't really believe that we have an impartial court at this point. Our courts are wholly and completely politicized, so we're really we're really at the mercy of our own ability to no longer use any of their products and services. That's what we Americans that are left, especially Christians, but even if we're not Christian, that's what we should be concentrating on, but that's another story. Related to that, I did do a story the other day, and I just want to uh, highlight this again. Rage and hate and profit machines for social media corporate state nationalist. So the necessity of rage, polarization, and addiction to social media profitability, which is from, uh, let's see, where's the, the headline here? Click on this. So this is social media tech depends on addicted outrage, polarized society to make money. This is from a future headlines report. And I took this from Fox Business. Ex-Google employee, big tech's biz model is a society that is addicted, outraged, and polarized. So not only are they censoring speech that falls outside of the corpo state nationalist vehicle of power, which is this critical race theory garbage, but they are also tweaking the algorithms to continue to keep you in a in a state of fear and hate they are and i've said this uh, multiple times i mentioned marat marat of the french revolution i'll repeat it over and over again i will on this show marat is one of my favorite references because this is what they are marat was a french newspaper man who basically created fake news hateful evil hate fake news so that he could whip people up into a frenzy to, to, to go against the king. Not that the king was a good guy, but uh, he, he was getting people to get whipped up into a frenzy to follow an ideology of fear and hate and moral supremacism. The French Revolution and the English Civil War of, with Oliver Cromwell, these are the two greatest examples that I can think of that really highlight exactly what critical race theory really is. It's old. It just takes on different forms. It takes on different victims and winners, but it's essentially the same form, which is moral supremacist, revengetarianism that will, the, the people who promise a relief from the violence and the hate that they're fighting against do so only under the condition that you surrender all of your freedoms and that everything that existed before be destroyed so that they could build anew and they can build humans in their image. Oliver Cromwell was trying to build humans in the Puritan image, not in the image of God, but in the Puritan image. And the French Revolution, Robespierre was trying to build people in the in the image of a, of a materialist godhead that uh, it's kind of a, well, they're, 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 they're the Bronze Age uh, version of this where you have the priest king. So they're trying to create, uh, uh, Robespierre would have been a new priest king, and he would have ultimately been worshipped him himself. And that's what will happen in critical race theory. Eventually you'll see the priest kings rise. You'll see the people that start to worship these people as maybe not literal gods, but de facto gods. You'll see that coming. And, and that's it. Those things never end well, and this won't end well either. And they won't have the the lifespan that Oliver Cromwell had, which was about 10 to 15, 10-ish, 15-ish years of rule, yeah, they won't have that. They have four to five years at most, maybe even less.